Hey, hello everyone. I'm not sure if it's still morning or not, <laughs> but this is Cadet. Isn't he so handsome? Look how beautiful he is. Look at those eyelashes. Maybe it's Maybelline. Anyways, um, so I was combing through his uh, coat, you know, like I do before the bath, and now I can get this comb through his coat on this side. See, and this leg is combed out, but this side, it's I haven't worked on yet. I'm about to start, so it's catching on this side. See that? But on this side, since I've already combed through, that's why I call grooming honest work, because once you do it, it's done. You know, you can't put that hair, you know, all that hair that I combed out, you can't put that back on there, you know? So this side, even if I come back a few minutes from now, still gonna go through. This side, no matter how much I try to convince someone that I did it, you know, they're gonna say, then why does it stick like that? But anyways, what I wanted to talk about today is that I don't always um, hand strip the sanitary area, you know, their private area, stomach and stuff. I don't, I don't always do it. Actually, I, I usually never do it, but today's different. When I felt down there, um, the hair felt dead. It felt different, and it would come out as I would kind of pinch and pull. It would just come out easily. So I was like, oh, this is all dead hair. It's all pat and I could feel the skin smoothing out as well. So I started pulling it out, and little by little, I mean, I'm just, and so, but usually I would shave that area. You know, I would just shave it, but if I shave it now, no, feeling all of this, all right, Cadet, can we see it? Can we see it, buddy? Oh, there you go, thank you. Okay, see all of this that just came out, right? And I'll show it to you. See, so now it looks much better. It looks a little red, you see some red dots where a lot of it just came out all at once. But it, it actually feels much better too, right? Um, <laughs> uh, never mind me stroking that. But anyways, um, so right here, right? I got most of it, but see right here, I'm just gonna show you. That hair right here, I can feel that it's dead. It looks dead, it feels dead, and check that out. If you just, with the slight little pull, it just comes right out, see that? And so now that area, that skin, is clear. And the reason why I'm not gonna shave this area today like I usually do, and I'm gonna clear out this hair, see that? And usually I hold the skin tight, but I'm holding the camera right now. I'm just kind of showing you how easily this comes out. See that? So, and I got a bunch out here. It was just so thick. This was all just so thick. You couldn't even see the skin, but now you can actually see right through this, to the skin. And that's because all of that, you know, I just pulled out of there, right? What's up, David T? You know, <laughs> David, I was like, <laughs> let me guess. I, you were about to sit down and you were about to write <laughs> your, your life meaning, your life goals. <laughs> I just finished shoveling. Oh, wow. See, I knew you were doing something productive. I was like, I feel it. David's got to be doing something productive right now. I got to stop him. <laughs> I got to stop David from doing something productive. Anyways, look at that. So that's why today I'm plucking this area. And I am going to shave it as well. You know, the hair right here that doesn't really come out. That's like healthy hair. So I'm just going to shave that. But with all of this stuff, all the crud that I pulled out of there, if I shave him, if I just shave that area, hey, what's up, Agnes? If I just shave this area today, like I did last time, then it's gonna leave all of that stubble, all of this would have been so packed full and his skin would have still felt bumpy and rough. And his skin would have had to work hard, much harder to try to get all of that stuff out now because I, I literally sealed it, trapped it in there by shaving it close to the skin. But now that I pulled it all out, you know, it doesn't look like much because I balled it up, but now that I pulled all of that stuff out of there, now, you know, and here's a good point. If I would have done this last week, then he would have, he would have uh, freaked out because it, would, it, would, it wouldn't have been ready, not last week, his last appointment. Um, so if I would have done that last month, he would have, he wouldn't have been able to tolerate it. It would have hurt, you know, because I'm pulling, it's kind of like if I'm yanking away at this hair, you know, it wouldn't have been ready. So last appointment, yeah, I just shaved that area. I didn't pull all that out because it wasn't ready and it would have hurt him. But this, this appointment today, when I felt it, I, it felt dead and the skin felt full and rough. And so I knew that today I had to shave it, but it's not like I shave it all the time. You know, so I really like Bruce Lee's philosophy, use no way as the way, you know, be like water. 
So anyways, that's what I'm going to do today. And I just wanted to share that just because, you know, I think that a lot of times we're so quick to just shave that because we're just so used to shaving that area. But sometimes let's just check and feel and make sure, you know, that area is safe to shave. Okay, David says, nope, got it done in time. Letting dogs out now. Aha, wow, David T, look at that. <laughs> I knew I was in the presence of a fellow Jedi. You know, you probably felt that I was trying to stop you from being productive. So you did the preemptive strike. Wow, the force is very strong in you, my friend. <laughs> the force is strong in this one. Okay, Nicole says, what a coincidence. I have to groom my uh, dog today because of her privates have dreadlocks. Exactly. So if the privates have dreadlocks, you know, use one hand to hold the uh, skin tight and then use the other hand to, you know, pull that dead hair out. And it should come out easily. And that's going to provide a lot of comfort and keep that area clean for longer. Okay, Agnes D, I think my Havanese gets around the gets this around the muzzle. Exactly. Actually, first thing I saw was hair like that sticking out right here. So that I pulled that out first. Here too, his ears, his ears were kind of full and clogged. So I pulled that hair out too, you know, on both sides. So it's, it's about helping the hair cycle through. Their, their hair has three cycles. It's called antigen, catagen, and telogen. So antigen, antigen would be like this. These are antigen hairs. These are like baby hairs, you know, new baby hairs growing in. Catagen would be like this. You know, these are hairs that are still growing and healthy. Telogen. Oh, sorry about that, buddy. Telogen would be like this. These hairs here that have stopped growing and they're just sitting there in the follicles and they've reached the end of their life cycle. But oddly enough, with these long-haired dogs, they just continue to grow. These dead hairs just keep continuing to grow all frizzy like this. So that's telogen. That's dead hairs that need to get pulled out. Okay, so um, David says, hey, Agnes, I know that breed, Havanese. It's difficult with the breed because each one have different type of hair. Exactly. And, you know, I didn't know this, <clears throat> but the Havanese are actually Bichons. So the Bichons come from the Barbet, which is a French water, water dog. Um, but anyways, <laughs> almost looks like a, like a, what do they call it? A Logoto. You know, a Lugoto or a Bonolo or something like that, those brown water dogs, that's what they kind of look like, the, the barbet, Barbettes. And so anyways, the Barbettes, they, um, they bred the Bichons from that. And so then it was the Bichons that split off into four groups. So there's the Bichon um, Frise, which we all know, the Bichon Bolognese, which are bigger, and they're from Italy. Um, and then they got the Bichon Havanese, they got the Bichon Maltese, and then, they, oh no, the five groups. And then they had the Bijan Tenerife, which um, is another island um, in the Mediterranean. But I, I hear that the Bijan Tenerife are now an extinct breed. But the, I don't think so though, because I saw pictures of the Bijan Tenerife and I swear one of my clients Bijans, we kind of make fun of him. We used to say that he looks like a little troll. <laughs> but anyways, um, he, I think he's a Bijan Tenerife or maybe he has that gene, that recessive, you know, anyways. Um, Agni says, yes. Okay, perfect. All right, but anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and continue working on this beautiful guy here. Oh my goodness. Amateur super fan. Wow, I learned so much from these streams. Awesome amateur super fan. Look at that. Oh my God, he's so beautiful. All right, but anyways, I gotta comb out this other side and then I gotta get him in the shower and then we're gonna, you know what? If I can find a, cause I forgot to bring my power cord and if there's a power cord laying around here, uh, maybe I'll stream the haircut so you guys can see how I make this guy look so super awesome. No, I'm just kidding. He already looks super awesome. <laughs> I just got to touch up. Maybe, maybe I'll stream the haircut later. Wow, great knowledge you have. I know, right? I have such great knowledge. I have just amazing knowledge and wisdom and humbleness, humility. Did I mention that modest? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop because, okay, honestly, guys, just, because, just in case you don't really know me, um, I always joke as a, as a way to cope with things. And so when people compliment me like that or when people tell me like, oh my God, I'm a fan or you're such a big star, I, uh, the only way I know how to co like deal with it is to joke around about it because you know I don't know how to be like, oh yes, I am, I am truly wise. You know, <laughs> I don't know. So I just joke about it, but hopefully you guys, you guys understand and don't judge me too harshly. 
David T, yeah, my Maltese has straight Bichon, but have curly hair. Yes, Havanese can, okay, perfect. Um, Agnes, I was trying to sound like Yoda. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. And great modesty I have. Anyways, <laughs> uh, David T, you're right, June. Could end up in shaving all the time, but if you don't talk, take time to inspect like you do. Exactly. So that's exactly, I love, I love grooming because I know this dog and I know the kind of haircut I'm going to do. I know the end result, but I don't really know what's going to happen all in the meantime, in between, you know? And I think that's what I love about dog grooming is that it gives me the structure and the consistency that I, I like to have in my life, but also gives me that a little bit of that spontaneous, you know, artistic creativity um, to help me. Oh, my arms are shaking now. <laughs> okay. Amateur super fan. Remember during the New Year stream, I still rewrite all my goals all the time. Oh my God. Awesome amateur super fan. That's so amazing. Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm done. I, I, don't, I don't have to do anything else, right? Shoot. Check. Life goal is complete. <laughs> Anyways. Um, seriously though, I might, I might stream the, um, the haircut. We'll see. Maybe.